On my palette, I have the three primaries, blue, red, and yellow, and then I have white as well. I'm going to work with the orange and blue complementary pair. So I'm just sketching out in an inky wash my cylinder with a wash of blue, and I'm going to begin to mark in all those value shapes, your highlight, your light, your midtone, your shadow, and then your darkest cast shadows and core shadows. Remember not to draw from your painting if you've already done this shape. Make sure that you're really looking at the shape in the photo once again to try to be as precise as possible. Since I'm using blue and orange, I'm going to need to mix my orange now with red and yellow. Then once I do this, I can start planning my tints and my tones. So let's sort of break down what this is actually going to look like. As a reminder, a tint is a color plus white, and a tone is a color plus its complement. So when I add blue to orange, it makes it more gray. For the highlight of my orange cylinder, I'm going to want to use orange plus a lot of white. For my light, I'll be using orange plus a little less white. For my midtone, orange. For my shadow, orange plus blue, its complement, and for my darkest shadow, orange plus much more blue. Now I'll actually apply these values onto my cylinder using my palette knife. Remember that you want to be pretty liberal with your paint. It should be thick, but not so thick that it's just a big chunky mess. You can experiment starting with your midtone or with your shadow. See what works best for you. There's not one way to do this. Don't forget to include your background, and as you're painting, make sure that you keep refining to see that your cylinder or whatever it is that you're doing is as correct as possible. Don't just vaguely assume that that's what it looks like. Really analyze those shapes and try to make everything accurate. Take a large flat brush, make sure that it's dry, and go ahead and start smoothing those edges. Remember not to make more than two or three strokes before cleaning off your brush on a towel. You don't necessarily have to put it in the turpenoid because then it'll make it wet again. You want a nice dry brush and really gently smooth out, not necessarily all, but many of those edges. So you can see that I've already toned my paper with the raw umber. You could easily tone the paper with the dark blue or with the orange if you'd like. I just chose raw umber because I think it's a nice neutral color. You can also choose a different form and a different set of complementary colors if you'd like, just to challenge yourself. If you have a lot of paint left over from exercise three, you can use the same colors if you'd like. 